Superbase Auth makes it really easy to add authentication and authorization to your apps. In this video, we're going to look at how JWT signing keys can be used to greatly improve the performance of Superbase Auth. We're going to refactor an existing Next.js app to use JWT signing keys. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you a single command that you can use to get up and running with a brand new Next.js app completely wired up with Superbase Auth and JWT signing keys without really needing to do anything we're about to cover. So let's get into it. Here I have a Next.js app wired up to Superbase to handle authentication. So if I sign in as john at superbase.com and my super secure password, we'll see this protected page that we can only see if we're authenticated. And we have a little bit of information about the currently signed in user. If we have a look at the code for this page, we're creating a Superbase client and then calling the get user method to work out whether or not the user is signed in. If they're not, then we redirect them to the auth page. And if we have a user, then we render out this page we're seeing in the browser. So the first change we're gonna make is rather than calling this get user method, we're instead going to call get claims. And then rather than getting back a user, we get back a claims object, which is very similar to what we get back from get user. And so that's what we want to render out on the page here. Rather than our user, we want our claims. And now if we go back to the browser, we see a very similar object that contains some information about our user. So our app is still functioning in the same way. We've just refactored our auth check to use get claims rather than get user. So get claims is how we recommend doing this kind of auth check going forward. This doesn't give us huge performance or security gains yet. It will later in this video, but right now this just sets us up to be able to use JWT signing keys, which we highly recommend you start using. So similarly to the get user method, get claims is currently making a network request to the Superbase auth server. It's passing across that JWT and it's saying, is this user authenticated? Is this JWT valid? And then once it gets back that response, it can determine whether it redirects the user to the login page or renders the page they're actually requesting. Now, this is probably a good time to mention that this video gets pretty technical. If you start to feel a little bit lost, that's totally understandable, but it really boils down to this one simple rule. Symmetric JWTs or how JWTs have worked with Superbase since the beginning need to be verified by the Superbase auth server. So that's the only thing that can say this user is valid and this JWT can be trusted. But with JWT signing keys, which we're about to configure, you get asymmetric JWTs, which means they can be verified by the Superbase auth server, but they can also be verified by your application. So again, symmetric keys need to go off to another server to be verified, whereas asymmetric keys can be verified by your application. So one less network request that needs to happen. And this get claims method can handle either of those cases. So it tries to verify the user locally if it's an asymmetric key, but if we're using the older symmetric keys, it will automatically handle sending this off to the Superbase auth server to see whether it's valid. So that's why we recommend using get claims because it can do either. It's handling that complexity for you. And when we call get claims, we get back these claims, but we also get back a header, which we can use to see some information about that JWT. So if we save this and head back over to the browser, we can see the signing algorithm that was used is HS256, which is a symmetric signing algorithm, meaning we can't validate this JWT within our application. So every time we refresh, this is going off to the Superbase auth server to validate that JWT. And so up in our middleware file, which runs on every single page load, we're also calling get user, which will always make that network request to the Superbase auth server. So let's test how long this actually takes. So let's take a timestamp for our start time, which we can get with date dot now. And then after we've called get user, let's console log finished JWT verification in, and then take another timestamp and minus off that start time. And then that's how many milliseconds this request has taken. And so since this happens server side, let's open up our server console and then go back to the browser and refresh this page. And if we have a look at how long this took, it was 1.2 seconds. Now they're 
is some caching and stuff that happens behind the scenes. So if we refresh this and have a look, it's not quite as dramatic at 850 milliseconds. And if we refresh again, we see 313 milliseconds, but it's gonna hover around that mark every time we refresh. And so the reason this is taking so long is firstly, I'm here in Australia and my Superbase region is set to Europe. So I'm very far away geographically from where my Superbase auth server is. So anytime I have to do that round trip, I need to wait for it. So this is the perfect example of where I would benefit from using asymmetric JWTs or JWT signing keys, because then my application could verify the state of my user without needing to send that network request to Superbase. And we can try with get claims. So rather than get user, we'll do get claims. That gives us back our claims. We'll also update our comments because we're such good citizens. So get claims here and get claims here. And then that should be it because our middleware is just taking that user and checking if we don't have a user and we're trying to navigate anywhere but the homepage or the login page or anything auth related, then we want to again redirect the user to that login page. So we're checking that on every single request. So now that this is refactored to use get claims, let's check the performance. So again, we'll refresh our page and have a look at that first request. Again, about 1.2 seconds, and then we'll do a few more subsequent requests, and we're seeing it's hovering around that same mark, so about 300 milliseconds. And there's not really anything we can do to improve the performance of this without implementing JWT signing keys. So let's do that now. So over in the Superbase dashboard, we want to go to project settings and then over to JWT keys. And you can see we're currently using our legacy JWT secret to sign all of our JWT keys. And here it's nudging us towards using JWT signing keys for these reasons. So let's go over to the JWT signing keys tab and migrate our JWT signing secret across to JWT signing keys. This is telling us that we're currently using symmetric JWTs. This will allow us to use asymmetric JWTs, and it won't actually cause any downtime to our project. So let's migrate the JWT secret, and you can see this has created a new standby key, which is our asymmetric key, but it has also kept our current key, which is our legacy HS256 key, which we know is a symmetric JWT signing algorithm. So nothing's actually changed in our Superbase project at this point. If any new JWTs need to be created, they will still use that legacy symmetric JWT to create them. And we can confirm this by going back to our application and refreshing, and we can see we're still using that HS256 key. And if we have a look in our server console, it's still taking a long time to verify because it's still going off to the Superbase auth server. So the way we move across to using this new asymmetric key is by rotating our keys. But we can't do that just yet. If we have a look over at the legacy JWT secret tab, we'll see we've now got this caution sign. It says we've now migrated to these new signing keys, but our Anon and service role keys, which we're using as API keys to connect to Superbase, they themselves are JWTs, which used the old legacy signing key. So if we have a look at our API keys, both our Anon and service role key are JWTs. And if we go over to our Next.js app and look at our .env.local file, this is what we're using here to connect to Superbase. And we'll see these are also the legacy API keys because we recommend migrating across to the new API keys, which uses a publishable and secret key rather than Anon and service role. So let's create some new API keys this is telling us it will create a publishable and secret key, and that's what we should use to connect our application to Superbase. So let's create those keys. And now we can copy our publishable key and head over to our Next.js app and replace our Anon key with this publishable key. And you'll see in this project, our environment variable is actually named next underscore public underscore Superbase publishable or Anon key, because these can now be used interchangeably. And so we can have a look at how we're using this environment variable in our application. So it's used to check we actually have those environment variables, but then to create our Superbase client in the browser, as well as in middleware and on the server. But anyway, point is they can be used interchangeably. So anywhere you're using your Anon key, you can replace it with the value of your publishable key. And anywhere you're using the service role key, you can replace it with this secret key. So now that we've migrated across to these new API keys, 
We can have a look at our legacy keys. We can confirm they're no longer being used. So I'm confident my Next.js application is the only thing using these. We've now refactored those to use our new API keys. And so I can disable these JWT based API keys. So this is warning us that we want to make sure that no applications are still using these. So let's proceed to disabling these API keys. We'll need to type disable to confirm, but you'll see that even if you realize later, oh, there was this other mobile app that was using this, you can re-enable these legacy API keys. So you're not locked out permanently. But we've now refactored our Superbase project to use these new API keys. And since they're not JWTs and they're not signed with that old signing secret, we can now head back over to our JWT section and see that we're still using that legacy JWT signing secret. But now that we've migrated across to those new API keys, we can fully migrate across to our JWT signing keys. And so let's rotate our keys. So this is telling us that the standby key will now become the current key, meaning that's what will be used anytime we're minting a new JWT, and the current key will become the previous key. And to proceed, we need to confirm all of our application's components have picked up the standby key, and that any non-expired JWTs will still be valid until we explicitly revoke the currently used key. So we'll have a look at that in a second. It's also a good time to call out that if you're using the old signing key to mint your own JWTs and manually verifying that somewhere else, you'll need to make sure that you refactor that manually across to use this new signing key before you rotate it. But that's not the case for me, so I'm going to rotate this signing key. And so now we're using our new JWT signing key to create new JWTs, but our previous key can still be used to verify JWTs. So this will be used for creating new JWTs, but either of these are valid until these tokens expire. But once you're sure you're no longer using this legacy symmetric JWT signing secret, you can revoke it, which means any JWTs that used this signing secret will no longer be trusted. They will not be valid JWTs. So by revoking the signing key, all applications trusting it will no longer do so. If there are JWTs or access tokens that are valid at the time of revocation, they will no longer be trusted, causing users with these JWTs to be signed out. When they sign back in, it will use the new JWT signing secret and they'll get all of the benefits of the asymmetric JWT, but they will be forced forced to sign out. So if you're sure that is all good, you can copy this UUID into this field and revoke the signing key, moving it to the revoked key section. Again, this can be moved back to being a standby key if you realize that was a mistake. But now that we've revoked that key, our Next.js app, if we refresh, ah, it's kicked us out. This is the exact thing your users will experience if they're using one of the old symmetric JWTs. But if we authenticate, we can see that signing algorithm has been updated to ES. And if we take a look at our server's console, our verification finished in five milliseconds. And if we refresh again and have a look at the console, two milliseconds. And if we refresh another few times, we can see it's hovering around that two or three milliseconds to verify that JWT because it's now happening in our application rather than going off to the Superbase auth server. So if you just wanna create a brand new Next.js application with all of this already wired up for you, then check out this single command. Let's use MPX to run the create dash next dash app package. And we're going to make sure this is running the latest version. Now we can specify the example with dash Superbase and then the name of our project. So in my case, JWT signing keys. Now, if we run this one, it's going to use that Superbase template to create our Next.js app. So now we can change into that directory and open it up in VS Code. And this is the exact same project that I've been using for this example. So if we have a look at that protected page, we can see it's already been set up to use that get claims method. And also in the middleware file where we're updating the user's session, this has also been configured to use get claims. So the only thing we need to do to wire this up to our Superbase project is update our environment variables. So take this .env.example file and rename it .env.local. We can then head over to our Superbase project and click this connect button, change this tab to app frameworks, and we can see our URL and our publishable key have already been populated. So let's copy these, then go back over to our Next.js project, and the naming for this one is just slightly different. So let's paste this underneath. Our Superbase URL is fine, but let's copy the name of our publishable or anon key environment variable and replace this one that is publishable default key. Now we can get rid of these ones 
and save this file and then run npm run dev, open this one up in a browser and we have exactly the same application. It's even reusing my JWT because I was already authenticated. But if we log out, we can log back in as one of our users and see that same protected page using our get claims method and therefore our asymmetric JWT signing key. So now that you've got auth sorted, let's learn about branching. But for that, you need to check out this video right here. We look at managing branches directly from the Superbase dashboard, which is an awesome way to quickly prototype new ideas. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.